Hi, it's Andy again, and this is going to be the first video in a new series I'm going to do on learning Java for uh, Android application development. So this is going to be mostly a Java class, but um, instead of using the Java classes, we'll be substituting them with uh, some Android classes instead. And uh, it's going to be targeted directly at, um, at Android development. So uh, you could use this, the, the, the stuff that I'm talking about in this class for developing Java programs, but we're not going to be focusing on that at all. Uh, the IDE that we'll be using is uh, Android Studio, and um, the first thing you're going to need to do so is, is get your tools. So what you're going to need is Android Studio and the Java JDK. Now I'm using Ubuntu Linux, um, but I do have the full Java JDK, but you can use Open JDK if you want, if that's going to be easier, because you can get that from the Ubuntu Software Center. If you're using Mac or Windows, just use the, the JDK that, that's available from oracle.com and I'll show you how to get that as well. So open up your, your software center and just type in open JDK and um, for this class you're going to want to get the Java 7 runtime instead of the Java 6 runtime. The reason for that is because the applications we'll be making I'm going to actually target um, the newest Android operating system which is just codename L, the L release or L preview. Um, so that's going to require Java 7 runtime while all previous versions of Android only required Java 6. So you're going to want to get the Java 7 runtime first and then next thing you're going to want to do is after you have that installed is get the, the Android Studio from um, from Google's website. So if you have Mac or, or um, Windows, you're going to want to go to oracle.com, uh, go to the download section, and tap on Java for Developers. That brings up this web website. Now you see here you have Java 8 and Java 7 here. You're going to want to get Java 7, however I think you could probably use 8. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but um, you want to click on this button here, the JDK. Um, next, you're going to want to accept their license agreement because you won't be able to download it until you do that. And then uh, pick your operating system. So if you have a 64-bit Windows, select this one, which is a .exe. If you have Mac, 64-bit uh, Mac, which is a DMG. These are, you know, self-executing, really easy to install. Uh, the Linux one's a little bit tricky, and I'm not going to cover it because of it's a little bit tricky. But if you're using Ubuntu, you're going to want to get this tar.gz, uh, extract it, and then um, you're going to want to tell uh, Ubuntu that you want to use that for your for your Java. So I'm not going to go over that because uh, it's much simpler to just get the JDK, Open JDK from the store. But this is the one that I am using right here. Um, for this class. Next, go to uh, developer.android.com. You're going to want to go to uh, develop tools and then Android Studio is here and uh, just download this. Um, it'll this, The current version that you're going to be downloading is 0 0.8.0 which is the a beta um, but it's not actually the most current version. The most current version is 0 0.8.2 um, which it'll ask you to update that once you um, once you open that up. So the next thing we're going to go is now you've downloaded and installed Android Studio. Oh, for for Linux, if you're using Android Studio, you're going to want to extract it and then um, open up. You'll have this uh, Android Studio folder. To run it the first time, you're going to have to actually do a terminal. So uh, let's close this for now so we'll, we'll run it that way. As you can see I have an update. This is going to be the 0.8.2 update that I haven't um, done yet. So we'll, we'll close this for now. We need to get into a folder. So if you haven't used terminal before, um, this is basically uh, a non-user interface way to open, run, um, move stuff, 
uh, but you want to need to navigate to certain folders. So what we need to do is we actually need to go into this bin folder and then run this studio.sh. So we need to change directory, which is CD. Go to Android Studio. If I can type. And then um, period slash studio dot sh. Now this will open Android Studio the first time. And then we can create a shortcut here by going into tools and uh, create a desktop entry. So once we have a desktop entry, you can just launch it from from the sidebar in, in Linux. So they've made it kind of simple for Linux users to finally get that. You just have to run it the first time. Um, so we'll close this project since this is going to be well above what we need to do for now. So the first time you open up um, Android Studio, you're going to be brought to this screen. Now, what you want to do is go to this configure, which is the wrenching gear, and then open up your SDK manager. Now, by default, you will have um, Android 4.4.2, this API 19. Um, most of this stuff installed. Uh, if you're using an Intel processor, definitely get this um, Intel uh, Atom system image. That's a .86 system image, and it'll run a lot faster. If you're using an AMD, you might have to use the, the ARM. I'm actually not sure because I don't actually have a computer with an AMD processor, but um, if you can't get the Intel image to work, just download the ARM one. It's going to be slow. It's going to not really be as responsive as you want, but um, you know, it'll work. So you need to download that. If you're using Mac or Windows, you're going to also want to download this. Um, if you're using an Intel processor, this uh, is Intel's Haxum. This will greatly improve performance even on uh, like for the regular um, system, in the x86 system image. So uh, it's not compatible with Linux, but that's not a big deal because the the x86 image runs fantastic in Linux as it is. Um, so if you're using uh, Intel Mac or Windows PC, definitely in, uh, download this. And then you're going to need to navigate to this folder on your computer and run it because it doesn't automatically install. So um, uh, I don't think it'll let me download it. No, it won't let me download it because it's not compatible with Linux. But once you you'll you'll get all this downloading. Once it's finished installing, um, you're gonna have to go into that folder. So for for me, it would be here. Um, Android Studio, SDK, and then uh, in this extras, you'll have another folder called Intel. So you double click on that, and then it'll have. Um, Oh, the file to download whether you have uh, Windows or Mac it'll automatically detect your your operating system so it'll only let you download the, cor the correct file for you okay next thing we need to do is set up um, a fake device that we're going to use to test all of our um, our projects on so the next thing we need to do is actually go up to here in the tools Manage AVDs. Now, AVD stands for Android Virtual Device. So, right now we have two devices here: is the Nexus 5 and and uh, Android TV. So let's create a new one. We're gonna create the click the Create button. We're gonna give it a name. So let's just do a Nexus 4. So Nexus 4, and I'll be using the L Preview. So when you select a device here, um, select the uh, you know, a standard device. Uh, I have a 1080p screen, so Nexus 5 and Nexus 4 both fit on here just fine. It'll automatically scale it anyway. Um, but so Nexus 4 is going to be, it's going to just look a little bit wider and the text is going to look a little bit bigger because it doesn't have as high of a resolution as the Nexus 5. So then the target is going to be which version of Android are you? 
going to run on this device. So we'll do Android L preview. The next, we need to select which uh, processor. As you can see, I only have Intel Atom selectable, and that's because if you go into this, I don't even have the ARM image installed. If you had downloaded and installed the image, they'll be selectable here. Um, next, I don't like having a skin. Um, we're not going to be using either camera. Uh, on Linux, I can use however much RAM I want. So here's going to be, you know, near two gigs of RAM. On your Windows machine, most systems won't let you use more than um, 764 megabytes of RAM. Uh, that's not really that big of an issue. It's going to be plenty. Um, but uh, just note that no matter which one you pick, uh, it's going to want to. It's going to warn you that you should probably decrease the RAM to 764. Uh, I have a Windows laptop, and it lets me use 1.3 um, gigabytes of RAM. It, it, it changes on every system, uh, but I, if I select two, it automatically changes it. That's an Intel hack something. Um, next thing, you're going to have internal storage. Doesn't really matter how much you use. The pro, the apps that we're going to do for this class aren't going to be very big. So uh, 200 megabytes should be plenty. Uh, if you want to do anything where you're going to be saving data to an SD card, uh, you're going to want to emulate the SD card and give it a size. So we'll do 200 megabytes as well. And then the last thing, uh, to greatly improve performance, you're going to use this use host GPU. Now the only time you really wouldn't want to use this is if you need to take screenshots of your app because that doesn't work if you use this use host CPU you use host GPU um, but you know for the testing and everything you're gonna want this checked uh, once you have your app already finished and you need to take screenshots well you know just uh, you can edit your images and then uncheck it you know get your screenshots and then recheck it one thing I've noticed is that the Nexus 5 image does not work at all without this being checked the Nexus 4 does, um, Nexus 10 did as well. So um, we'll use the Nexus 4 use host GPU. So once we have that, it's going to take a little bit to, um, you know, make our, our image. As you see, the screen went dim a little bit. We're done. And now we can now run that image. So you, if we wanted to, we can edit it as well and uncheck the GPU. So if we edit, you know, we can uncheck that. But uh, let's run this now to show you how it runs. So we'll hit the start button. Uh, don't do this scale display to real size. Um, just ignore that for now. I mean, if it's not fitting on your screen because uh, you're using a really low res monitor, um, you know, then you can scale it. But, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. Uh, so we'll start it, and here we go. Now it's going to take a little bit for the first time it, you launch it. Uh, your mileage will vary with how long it takes to boot up. Um, like I have a, a decent CPU. I mean, this computer is four years old, so I mean, it's not like the fastest computer on the planet. Uh, I do have an external video card that was pretty decent four years ago, so uh, you know it, it's decent hard. It's definitely plenty to run. Like this will may take you longer, and especially if you're not using the GPU, it's going to take a lot longer. And, or same with the AMD image. That's why I really like using the Intel image uh, when possible. So you'll see that this is you know a full build of. Um, of the operating system and in, including Google Maps that's now recently uh, been included as well as Google Play services uh, which allows you to test out you know Google Plus logging in and Google Drive and all that stuff they just don't include the apps for you but uh, Google Play services is included okay so now that you have all this done uh, let's you know start a project. So let's create a new app. And this one's just going to be your typical Android world, hello world app. Um, in the next video, I'm actually going to go over what the, the actual application structure 
for an Android app. And then we'll actually go into um, building, um, learning Java code. So we're going to go back. We're going to start a new project. We're going to call this Hello World. We want it for the phone. Uh, we're going to target ice cream sandwich. That's fine. And minimum SDK is going to be Android L, uh, which is going to be, oh, that's if we were to use the TV. Never mind. Minimum SDK is going to be ice cream sandwich. That's going to be perfect for this. We're going to do a blank activity. Don't worry. I'll explain what an activity and what a fragment and all that stuff is uh, later on. Uh, So this is a good time to test, make sure everything is working. Um, if you don't have this set up properly, you won't be able to run the apps that we make. And um, you know, this will be a good time for you to let me know if you need any help with anything. So as you can see, it's just going to display uh, some text on the screen. That's it. White background, everything. Um, this little button here is the run app this will send the the application onto our virtual device see so we have our virtual device running it's nexus 4 and we want to compile it and run it so if we see here's our device and we have the app is running so now we're all set up so uh, if you have any issues let me know and i'll try to help you out in the comments section and uh, have a good day Okay, one thing I forgot to mention in the introduction was that if you're using a Windows computer to install the JDK, before you can use Android Studio, you need to let the entire computer know where your Java JDK path is. Um, I don't have Windows running right now. As you can see, I'm in uh, Linux, but I do have um, my gateway computer has uh, Windows obviously on it on a separate hard drive. Now what you want to do is go to your computer, your your C, um, if you're running Windows 7, click on the icon, have it brought up, and then right click on computer and then select properties. Um, from there on your left hand side view over here you'll have something that says advanced um, system settings or something like that. Click on that and I'll have another pop-up window where you'll have an icon on the bottom that says environment variables. Um, if you don't know, how, if, if I'm not saying it clearly, just Google environment variables uh, for Windows and how to get there. Um, what you want to do is copy the path of your JDK. Now if you install the 64-bit JDK, it'll be in this folder program files. If you installed the 32-bit JDK it'll be in program files x86 so I have a 64-bit processor and version of um, uh, Windows so it's in it's going to be here in uh, program files Java the version of your JDK which I haven't updated this one in a while because it's 25 um, but you want to get the path of this folder bin so right click on any of these select properties get this for you it'll be like C um, colon slash program files Java JDK you want to copy that and then put it into your environment variables create a new one called Java home or Android home it doesn't really matter what you name it but the conventional naming scheme is uppercase everything java underscore home um, and then paste that in there uh, and that'll help you have um, the Android Studio run. You can't run it until you've already installed the JDK and, in, um, and then put the JDK's bin folder in your path. So uh, just a little addendum to the last video you won't be able to do anything until you've completed that and have that um, already set up. All right. Have a good day.